Okay, one more polynomial inequality. x to the fourth is less than x squared. We, we want to find all the values for x such that this statement is true. And here's what I'll do. I'll start by taking this x squared and pop it over to the other side. So we get x to the fourth minus x squared is less than zero. And the left side will factor. I can get an x squared out of each term. So this is x squared times x squared minus one is less than zero. Now look at this statement. Let me show you how to think about this statement. This times this is negative. You see that? Two things multiplied together and less than zero means negative. So I have two things multiplied and the result is negative. And that is the significant way to think about this. Two things multiplied together and the result is negative. Now how do you multiply two numbers and get a negative number as a result? Well the only way to do that is if one of the two is negative. If this times this results in a negative number, then one of those must be negative, one and only one. And x squared is never negative. So if one of these two things is negative, and it can't be this because anything squared is never negative, then this has to be negative. So logically, our problem simply reduces to this factor being negative. So I can say x squared minus one is negative. Okay, now add one to each side. You get x squared is less than one. And if we square root each side, be careful here, watch this. The square root of x squared is less than the square root of one, which is just one. And the square root of x squared, that is one way to define the absolute value of x. So saying this right here is equivalent to saying the absolute value of x is less than one. That means the distance from zero on the number line has to be less than one. So if we draw a number line, here's zero, one, and negative one, negative one, x must be a distance from zero that is less than one. So it has to be in between this. And this is not a less than or equal to. It's just a less than. So I don't want to include negative one and one. So I'll use parentheses right there. And it's everything in between, but be careful here. Zero is not allowed. If I look back at my original equation, you can see that zero won't work because zero to the fourth is zero and zero squared is zero and zero is not less than zero. If this was less than, less than or equal to right there, then zero would work, but zero is not allowed. So we need to open circle right on the zero. Okay, so zero is not a part of this solution but all the numbers between negative one and zero are, and all the numbers between zero and positive one are. And if you wanted to write that out, you could say negative one is less than x is less than zero, or zero is less than x is less than one. Okay, your answer could be anywhere in here or anywhere in here. So logically, it's an or right there. Okay, a couple of other things to point out that are worth noting is look at this right down here when you get to this point you could graph that you could graph it like this x squared minus one is less than zero that should immediately conjure up an image in your mind okay look just real quick if this is your x and y axes y equals x squared looks like this so what is a graph of x squared minus one well it's that same parabola shifted down one so it's going to go through these points, negative one uh, on the y-axis and positive one and negative one on the x-axis. So this is going to be my x squared graph shifted down one. And then I, then I have to look at this, x squared minus one is less than zero. Where is this graph less than zero down below a height of zero? Well, for these x values, down there, the graph is below zero, and you can see that's between negative one and one. Same thing we got there. We just have to remember not to include the zero point because zero doesn't work in this case. One other way to think about it that's worth looking at is look back at the original equation. You can skip all of this and just approach the entire problem graphically. Watch this. 
Let me zoom in here. So our x and y axes, let's say this is positive 1 and negative 1, and here's y equals positive 1 up here. Okay, what does a graph of x to the fourth look like? Well, x to the fourth looks something like this. It goes through 0, 0, and it goes through 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and it looks kind of like a parabola, except it's a little bit flatter at the bottom, and it gets steeper more quickly. Let me try again. Okay, something like that. And it's symmetrical, so over here it'll be doing something, uh, just a mirror image of that. So, graph of x to the fourth will look something something like that. And I'll also think about a graph of x squared. What does a graph of x squared looks like? Well, it also goes through 0, 0, and 1, 1. But it doesn't get quite as steep right here, and it doesn't get quite as flat down there. So it's going to curve something like this. Okay. And that's my graph of x squared. And then look at the original problem. x to the fourth is less than x squared. When you look at this picture, you can see where the x to the fourth graph is less than or below the x squared graph. And you can see right along here and right along here. Not at point zero because they're equal at point zero, but everywhere between zero and one and everywhere between negative one and zero, the x to the fourth graph is less than the x squared graph. So you can see the answers. If you can picture this problem graphically like that, you can immediately see the answers. And it's exactly what we had there before.